What's going on guys, it's James aka The Boys of Jon Snow, back with more movie reviews. This time we're talking about Pacific Rim Uprising. Let's dive into it. So Pacific Rim Uprising is a sequel to the, I think it was like 2011, I don't actually know, I really don't care either, uh, movie Pacific Rim. I actually never saw the first Pacific Rim because to me it looked dumb and it was just big things and other big things. And that was it. But when I saw this other one coming out, I saw an opportunity for this uh, genre to actually grow. And also the trailer was really, really great. They had a really cool song mixed in with it too. Some really great visuals. I liked John Boyega in Force Awakens. I didn't like him that much, but I was just looking forward to him actually doing his own thing in this movie with his own accent for once. So that was something I was excited for. And after I watched the movie, I have, you know, some good things to say. You know, it was big, it was dumb, and it was fun. I loved every second of it. Let's dive into characters real quick, which really, I don't really remember any of the characters. I just remember the actor, John Boyega, actually had a really good performance, really saw a lot of his charisma. Very Will Smith-esque in Independence Day, which I liked a lot. You saw a lot of charisma, really funny. I don't think a lot of the humor landed in this movie. Whatever he did actually did work. Um, the girl that he mentored, she was pretty cool. She's an unknown, but I really like, she pulled her own weight and literally a franchise of big massive like robot monster things and she did a good job she had a really strong character even though i don't remember her name so that's my fault not the movie's fault or maybe it's movie's fault i don't know and then the other dude who was just kind of like asshole guy and he wasn't like that over top asshole guy he's still pretty cool like you understood where he's coming from so he was a cool character but really there was no memorable characters in this movie I enjoyed it. Uh, the the pros and cons to lots of things. So let's get some pros out of the way first. Some really good action set pieces. A lot of cool stuff. Initially, there's out the gate. There was like this chase between a big Jaeger and a little Jaeger, and that was really really cool. Um, good different uh, monsters, not mon uh, robots. Different robots. Some had really cool abilities. This time, a big old like metal like um, is that uh, a mace? No, it might be a mace. Yeah, a mace hand, something like that or one like a katana or two katanas, something like that. And that was really cool. Something really different uh, that we didn't see in the first one, which I never saw, but I just saw from the trailer. There was really samey. The plot was kind of interesting too. I gotta give this one credit. There were some kind of like twists and turns that they were, they were kind of leading you this way and then the entire time they have this other thing going around. And once they converge, like you saw everything going on, there's some good twists and turns with the plot. Some really good callbacks to the first one, maybe a few too many, especially with the speech. They're all like very stuff referential about the speech like oh man remember that speech like yeah we do you don't have to talk about it and 10 minutes later they keep talking about the speech i don't understand why like i think it was a fine speech i don't know about it but i do have to give this movie a lot of kudos because i did not see the first one and i walked into this without caring about anything and i was invested in these characters i liked the story i grasped everything they were trying to do in the first one in just like a couple minutes. Like they, they set the world, they set the rules, and then they played in that world with those rules with little to no effort. And then some kind of the weirder parts, dialogue was kind of weird at some points. They sometimes take themselves a little too seriously, and this is when the cheesy dumb fun kind of come together, when they're saying really dumb things, and you know they believe it, and you're kind of like, ow, this kind of, oof, that hurts, that hurts a bit. <laughs> but it was fine, I didn't, the, the expectations going to this movie were low, but all I wanted was a big beat em up movie, and I got that. But going off of that thought still, the I wanted big things hitting other big things. And I got that. But what we got at the same time is because there are people inside the robot. And so one scene in particular I did not like, that it, it took away from the impact, and this happened throughout the entire movie, is when you have big monster here and then robot here and then robot's going to tackle big monster and you're going to see that pursuit of the robot going after big monster and then he's like okay are we gonna hit our big move yeah and then you see robot get ready to hit big move and then you're waiting for impact because it's gonna look freaking cool and then they cut to the people inside the robot doing the move so you miss the impact of the actual cool thing and then you get the shot of the robot after of dead monster and then a live robot. And you're like, I don't even know what happened because you cut away too much. There's a lot of cutting away of action. What, when we saw action, it was still cool. But there's so much cutting away that it took away from impact of something that could be really, really awesome. And that's what I wanted. I wanted it awesome. I wasn't looking for anything like emotional 
or like heart wrenching. Just went to some awesome beat em up stuff and you got about 70% of that. I saw this movie with two friends and they both seemed to enjoy it. They both definitely liked the cheese, they both liked the monsters, they both liked the fun. That's all we really wanted out of this movie. And I don't feel like I'm giving this movie a little more credit than it deserves because an example like Wrinkle in Time, a movie that set itself up to be this big adventure of like kid story and stuff like that ended up just being this big old mess is a lower tier when they in a way tried more with that. In a Pacific Rim, all I wanted was this big beat em up monster movie because that's what it said it was from the beginning. And if you just understand your tone, understand your movie, and move forward, you're gonna do a decent job. This movie was exactly what it was supposed to be. Some really cool twists and turns to make this new universe thrive. Some really good characters, some good actors, some good prestige in this new franchise. And this is a franchise and universe I wanna continue exploring. There's so much to explore. I really like what they're doing with it, and I'm willing to see another one. With all that being said, we're gonna give this movie a five dollar Tuesday rating. Nothing totally crazy. I think it is worth a watch though. I think it was a lot of fun. You do not need to see the first one going into it. Five dollars on a Tuesday night and then going to get like a burger after, totally worth it. Well that wraps things up for today. If you like what you saw or heard, dip my hands, hit like, subscribe, share, all that good stuff. And I have an announcement. I saw some stupid ass Disney Pixar uh, bracket on Twitter and I'm fixing that as we speak. So by the time this video is uploaded, I should have it on my Twitter, at my name is Jums. I'm gonna use this as Boise to retweet it because we're getting answers to this. It was one of the dumbest things I've ever seen. Some, It was just god awful. So I'm fixing it and then every day or multiple times a day, we're gonna put out the rounds of the bracket to get the true Disney vs. Pixar champion because this is bullshit and that was a dumb bracket, okay? so. Follow that My Name is Jumps. Keep an eye out for that bracket. Keep an eye out for the poll. The Disney Pixar Super 32. It's coming your way. Bring it in for a hug.